all of you once again still we are talking about upper egypt and talking about all the developments that took place over there we have many many beautiful sites where you can enjoy your vacation and also you have a beautiful sunny weather where you can enjoy a lot of fun we have many many things to talk about starting from early morning till after midnight and also we are talking about it from different perspective because remember we are talking about visiting these places while being on a Nile cruise so being an uh, hotel that is floating in the Nile River and to find out more about Upper Egypt let's continue our tour and find out more about beautiful Aswan and Abu Simbel. The Valley of the Kings is another important site to visit. It is a beautiful location where 62 pharaohs were buried. This royal cemetery is located on Luxor's west bank, down the only entrance a long narrow winding path. This was a secret place where they used to guard the entrance as well as the tops of the hills to discourage troop robbers. make sure you have to stop by the temple of Gandhara. Visitors to Luxor should try to visit this famous temple of Hathor at Gandhara if they have the chance. By taxi, the trip will take you only one hour from Luxor or even by the bus. This temple was built in the first century BC by Ptolemy and Queen Cleopatra and it is one of the best preserved temples in all of Egypt. Later, Roman emperors continued to decorate it to honor the Hathor, the goddess of maternity, love and music. The Greeks knew Hathor as Aphrodite. The first gateway built by Roman Emperor Domitian in 80 AD leads to the well-preserved Great Hall, which is decorated with Hathoric columns. Hathor is mainly represented with the horns of the sacred cow protruding from her head, supporting the solar disk of the sun. In her hands, she holds an ankh, the symbol of life and a scepter. The interior walls of the Great Hall have remarkable scenes depicting sacrifices made to the goddess of the temple, and the amazing ceiling abounds with astronomical representations. The ceiling is divided into seven ways, and the best remaining three are the first division on the eastern side, which depicts the Nut, the goddess of the sky, who is bending herself towards the earth, with the sun disk shining on the temple and the mask of Hathor. Second, next to the first one, is a representation of the sun boat and star goddess. And the third one, the western ceiling, which shows a perfect representation of the zodiac signs. One of the reasons that the temple is so beloved 
The original zodiac relief is now in the Louvre Museum in France. The second hall has six columns, adorned with rich capitals and granite pedestals. On both sides of this hall are small store rooms used to store the wine jars that came from the island of Crete and the fertile Fayum and Karga oasis. Next is the central chapel and its two altars, one for the sacred boat and the other for the sacrifices offered to the goddess Hathor. The temple of Medinet Haba is another beautiful site to visit, which is one of the largest memorial temples in Egypt. After Ramses III died, the temple was built to commemorate him by orders of the current king himself. One of the most wonderful scenes engraved on the back of the southern tower is the oxen hunt. It depicts Ramses III leading his chariot and hunting wild oxen. And here you can notice that the sculptor was skilled in showing the pain of the wounded animals. can never tell or explain the beauty of the site, but a real tour will give you an amazing experience and open the way to learn more about ancient history and civilization. Being here is a real travel through history because we are moving around places that stand still for thousands of years. One of the most important sites to visit is Abu Simbel Temple. Well, this is a beautiful site and we have many, many things to talk about this important temple. Well, it is a huge temple. It's a beautiful one. Also, we have something about removing or moving this temple from one place to the other. Just imagine the concept itself. So talking right now about Abu Simbel and more about the history of this beautiful temple and more about secrets of this temple. The cruise in between will also take you to one of the most important sites, a masterpiece of art that is Abu Simbel. The great temple of Abu Simbel in Nubia, near Egypt's southern border, is among the most awe-inspiring monuments of Egypt.
It was cut into the living rock by King Ramses II of the 19th dynasty. The temple is most well known for the four imposing seated colossal statues that dominate its facade. One of these collapsed because of an ancient earthquake and its fragments can still be seen on the ground. Colossal standing statues of the king line the main hall, leading to the sanctuary where four deities are there, Amun-Ra, Rahurakti, Ptah, and a deified version of Ramses II. The temple was built with such precision that on two days a year, the 22nd of February and the 22nd of October, the sun's rays enter the temple, cross the main hall and illuminate the innermost statues. Another rock-cut temple to the north, known as the Small Temple, dedicated to the goddess Hathor and Ramses II's great royal wife, Queen Nefertari. On the facade of the Small Temple, her colossi are the same size as those of her husband, a very rare example of such display, but shows how much he loved her. The two temples were moved from their original location in 1968 after the Aswan High Dam was built, as it threatened to submerge them. The relocation was completed and the temple was admitted into its lists of World Heritage Sites in 1979. As for Aswan, it is completely different. The city of Aswan is gifted with some of the most beautiful natural landscapes of the Nile River that makes the trip on a simple felucca or boat an amazing experience. As long as we are talking, 
about the Nile River, there is an amazing experience that you can try in Aswan, either to try one using the public ferries or a feluca that will take you to another beautiful site, the Botanical Garden. The Aswan Botanical Garden is home to thousands of birds and many exotic plants imported from many parts of the world, like Far East India and Africa. The Aswan Botanical Garden offers a beautiful and unique landscape. The island is landscaped with rare and exotic plants. It is located on an island to the west of Elephantine Island. It's one of two islands in the Nile immediately adjacent to the city center of Aswan. Aswan has some amazing historical sites on the Nile River. Well, my favorite one is the Elephantine Island. We have heard a lot about ancient places, weird exotic names, but every name has an origin and some facts behind it. Elephantine is one of the sites that anyone can wonder about the name that the island gained. It is actually meaning both words of elephants and ivory because Aswan city once including the island were the center of ivory and granite trading. Others said that the rocks surrounding the island are in the shape of elephant tusk. However, the island takes place just by the downstream of the first cataract that cuts through Egypt and Sudan in the southern borders. Elephantine had an important role during the intermediate period of ancient Egypt history. It stood as a fort protecting the southern borders and was a departure point for the military expeditions towards Nubia and Africa.
According to ancient Egyptian beliefs, Elephantine was the residence of god Hnu, who was one of the original deities served and worshipped in ancient Egypt. Elephantine Island includes many of the ancient ruins. Unfortunately, the temple of Knu is completely destroyed, yet still there are some stones and damaged columns, and there is a well-preserved square granite gate way of the temple. On the north of the island, there is a restored temple known as Satis Temple. The temple was built during the New Kingdom in the time of Queen Hatshepsut and King Tutmos III, on top of Middle Kingdom ruins. Aswan is famous for its beautiful Nile Valley landscape, significant archaeological sites, and its peaceful aura. Its weather is warm all the year round, which makes it a perfect winter destination. The city provides some beautiful views and attractions to sail through the Nile with the felucca. There are many spectacular Egyptian landmarks spread around Aswan, being a mixture of both ancient monuments and more modern structures. The Philae Temple is one of such landmarks near to Aswan and has led to an interesting history, being constructed to honor the Egyptian goddess Isis more than 2600 years ago. Other landmarks of the past include the Monastery of Saint Simon, the Mausoleum of Aga Khan, and also the Tombs of the Nobles, which have been cut into the high cliffs and dominate much of the Nile's west bank from their elevated position. Well, there are also more recent additions to the skyline of Aswan that include the lotus-shaped Egyptian-Russian friendship monument and the awesome riverfront Coptic Orthodox Cathedral.
Well, that was all for our backpack for today. Just as I told you, I'm trying to tell you more about Egypt during winter time. And when we talk about Upper Egypt, talking about Luxor and Aswan, definitely these are the perfect destinations during this season or during this uh, actually period of time talking about uh, january talking about the holidays during this month many many people they enjoy visiting luxor and aswan to enjoy such a beautiful sunny weather we will be back again to tell you more about egypt and more about how you can enjoy your trip on the nile cruise moving all around the important and best places ever to learn more about ancient culture history and civilization